there may be some, you may have some co some questions as we go along. So I think what we we'll do is we we'll maybe keep a few minutes for the end. The more specific questions that you want to get asked longer term, just filter them all through me, and I'll manage it through with Carl and Ian. Okay. So over to you, Carl. Okay, thanks very much, Mark. Appreciate that. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Mark, just a quick one. Can you see my screen okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. So I'm assuming everybody else can, if you can. Um, if not, speak now or forever hold your peace, because there's not much I can do about it. <laughs> <clears throat> Okay, so as Mark said, what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll give us a, a run through of, of Yellowfin. Uh, I realise that you've probably seen it uh, embedded uh, within BMC, um, but what you might not have seen are some of the sort of key features uh, and functionalities that we've got um, within the product itself that uh, I know BMC don't actually use or utilise or, or have in their system. So um, we'll, we'll highlight those today um, and we'll take a good look at other bits and pieces that we can do within Yellowfin that uh, really make it a much more rounded product. Um, so first thing to do then is uh, I'll give you a bit of a, uh, a background to, to Yellowfin and how it how it could exist within environments for you. Yeah, it's a it's a platform agnostic product, effectively meaning it can be installed anywhere. There's no real hardware. Um, specification that goes with the product. It could be installed on a Unix box or a Windows box. Um, it could be uh, installed and used within the cloud, uh, hosted on premise. I happen to have it running on a MacBook Air at the moment, so laptops as well if you want to. But it is an enterprise class solution, so you don't need to be installing software on lots of different PCs and, and, uh, uh, and devices to use it. Uh, you access Yellowfin via a web browser. So I happen to be using Chrome at the moment. Um, I could be using Firefox, could be using Internet Explorer, Edge, whatever. That's not a problem. You just use whatever browser you happen to use uh, and point it at your Yellowfin instance. Login to Yellowfin is rather a username and password. Um, we also have integration uh, direct with the likes of uh, Active Directory, LDAP services, stuff like that. So you could use single sign-on as well uh, if you wanted to. That's not a problem. Configuration is done within Yellowfin for that. Or you could be using like a, a quick sign-in, which would be something like uh, passing the URL um, with a couple of parameters, username and password, which exist within Yellowfin. Uh, or indeed within the Active Directory and go straight in without prompting for username and password for your end users. So there's a number of ways of uh, uh, getting into the system seamlessly, but the security is always there. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about that towards the end uh, of the demo when we get into the administration side of things. So I'm just going to quickly log in now uh, and we'll take a look at what we're presented with. You may have seen uh, a typical sort of dashboard or setup uh, within BMC, but I'll give you a quick run through on different chart types and interactions and stuff, and then we'll look at uh, some other users. So three sort of main users within Yellowfin, uh, a consumer, a creator, uh, an administrator. Consumer tends to be somebody who's going to interact with these charts and reports. They're going to uh, want to be doing drilling functions and brushing functions and, and really slice and dice the data and get at uh, data and charts uh, in a way that they really want to. So that, that would typically be your consumer. Your creator is typically somebody who puts these charts, dashboards, reports together, etc. And we can take a look at that as well. <clears throat> and then obviously your administrator is somebody who has uh, the administrative functions over the system that would create uh, data sources, views, schemas, uh, branding for uh, different companies and so on and so forth, client organizations. And we'll look at all of these users in turn. Very quickly, though, we'll, we'll whiz through consumer. You guys have probably seen all these charts or, or different charts, et cetera, within the system anyway. Um, but some of the interactions you might not have or you might not have seen. So we'll quickly touch on those. And, I, and I'll just uh, jump through these quite quickly. Um, we can always look at these in more detail another time. But yeah, I'll just give you a quick run through on a sort of consumer point of view. So I've got a, a typical desktop in front of me. This is my desktop. I'm logged in as administrator, so I've got access to a lot more functions than your normal sort of consumer would have. And I've got a number of dashboards available to me on tabs, which I can obviously select, and I'll see different charts and reports that are in there. The one I'm looking at at the moment is a series selection um, 
dashboard, which gives me some summary information on some metrics that I've got within my data set that I'm using here at the moment. We'll talk about data sets in a minute. <clears throat> and I'm able to select any of these and change the metrics that I'm viewing uh, on my chart immediately from, from my selection. I can point at any of the plots uh, on my particular chart and get more information straight away, or I can flip behind and actually see the data that's being used to create this particular chart. I can always do those. If I click plus, I would actually take a step into this report and I, I would have the report um, as itself uh, and its own entity with its chart and with its data associated with it. So I can always get at my information in a bit more detail. Or indeed, I can zoom into the uh, chart and the report in a bit more detail using my time slider. So all of these things are really easy to build, and we'll look at that in a minute. We'll throw a report together in a little while. Uh, it's very simple to do. And my time slider allows me to really focus in on, on what I'm looking uh, for with regard to my chart. Um, and obviously, this change is based on what I select uh, from my top chart there, and everything all sort of comes together very nicely. Um, obviously, some different chart types here. Um, you'll see lots of different chart types in Yellowfin. We've got over 50 plus chart types available, um, and we'll see a few more during this demonstration anyway. A quick look at drilling. Um, you've probably seen this feature already, but we've got three different drill types within Yellowfin. So we've got drill down, drill through, and drill anywhere. Drill down allows us to step down into the data in more detail. So for example, looking at Europe, I can drill down into Europe and see where the European figures come from straight away. Really simple to do. I'll show you that when we build a report. So that's a sort of drill down function. It's really handy to get at information just by stepping down into it. The drill through function takes us to an entirely different report. So we can see with this report here that I've got some interesting metrics. All of these have a, a drill through function on them. So I could select one and take a step through to a different report, um, which has its own graphic associated with it, its own chart, and its own rack of information that when summarized uh, was the figure that I actually drilled through onto. Um, this is made up of uh, multiple reports here. So I've got one report of, of figures and one report of a chart. If I wanted to here, I could carry on drilling. I could drill somewhere else, drill down or drill through again if I had more uh, steps behind this. I'm not limited in what I do here. Uh, back to my drill dashboard. If I wanted to drill anywhere, we have that function in Yellowfin as well. Now, drill anywhere really uh, is something that allows us to replace the metrics on a chart with something completely different, um, but still related to my first one. So for example, if I look at Europe here, and I want to look at Europe figure by year, with Drill Anywhere, I can do exactly that by just selecting time year, uh, and my metrics all change based on what I've selected. I can do that again, 2013 booking status, for example, that's what it was. I look at active, and I can look at athlete location, athlete region, and so on and so forth. So I can really, jump around within my data set um, to wherever I want to go. And that's the drill anywhere function allows us to do that. More from a sort of analysis point of view, um, where I want to analyze the data and, and do some funky things with it. Um, we've got a number of different ways of interacting with the data here. Um, and these are different dashboard types, obviously, that we're looking at here. Um, so for example, I'm looking at a, a plot uh, a scatter plot chart here, which is fine, but it's a bit compressed. And I want to zoom in on this. We can easily do that with the elephant. We've got a brushing feature. And I can just brush over what I want to keep, press keep, and just zoom straight in on that particular uh, amount of plots. And obviously, pointing at any of these plots reveals more information. Um, and that's a really cool way of actually interacting with the data. I could do that again and keep if I like. Or I could do something else. So for example, I've linked my charts together here. If I highlight these four metrics and decide to keep those, all of my charts changed based on what I just selected from my, my little selection of metrics there. Again, I could do that again. I could probably zoom in if I want to. Um, or I could keep something else or discard or, or reset it. So I'll just reset this and show some more interactions. So that's sort of brushing technique. I've also got filtering available to me. Uh, we would expect that filtering is really easy to do in Yellowfin. We'll throw a report together in a minute and, and add some filters. Really simple thing to do. Um, we can just select what we want to look at 
uh, and go and my charts changed based on my filter selection as it happens I chose not to have this chart as part of my filter set on this dashboard um, but if I opened the report itself I've got my own filter set for that particular report anyway uh, and I could link them if I wanted to I just have chosen not to in this instance so I'll just quickly reset that so we'll go back to how we were and we'll take a look at um, charts more from a different point of view so we were looking at it from the point of view of, of athletes we wanted athlete information uh, we might actually want agency information in this instance and we get different chart types so we have sub tabs underneath our dashboard tab and we can keep doing that and build it up so it still sort of remains relevant within the actual dashboard itself we've got a number of different chart types including mapping and layering we can do that in yellowfin really easily um, if we wanted to interact with a background layer or an image when we create our report we just set up what we want to do so in this particular instance and we'll look at maps in a little bit more detail in a moment I can put point at any particular country uh, and see some information associated um, with that country or indeed I could change um, the information that I'm plotting uh, and my chart will update showing completely different information um, and so on and so forth so we'll look at that in a little bit more detail in a moment um, but we can interact with layers background layers images maps etc uh, more from a sort of marketing point of view our marketing tend to want uh, sort of um, uh, visual representations and infographics as opposed to just plain charts so we can do that as well um, we've got a Twitter stats uh, screen here with some data coming straight out of our database but a background image um, and a, pl and a uh, plotted graph straight on top of this background image as well and some different chart types and again a drill down option but this time uh, drilling down on the actual graphic of the chart as opposed to um, the actual uh, metric or dimension that's being defined for that chart so different ways of interacting with the data more from a, a sort of KPI point of view here so KPI we don't really want to do an analysis we just want to monitor we want to get information flashed on screen for us um, updated on a pretty regular basis that's simple to do in Yellowfin as well we can set the refresh rate for each particular chart um, or report you can even set a refresh rate for an entire dashboard which will refresh all the charts and reports in that dashboard so you've got control over that as well so with regard to this KPI Yellowfin's done quite a bit of the work for us here we've told it what metrics we want to track and we want which uh, KPI report we want um, and Yellowfin asks us the questions about uh, what particular plots we want on this as we build the KPI but it's doing the background work for us so all these various charts and graphs are, are plotted and created by Yellowfin um, the only thing we give it is the sort of summary information it puts this lot together for us um, we also have the metrics that we're tracking and Yellowfin requests that there is some kind of background report for these but it gives us a drill through to get to that report uh, as part of our KPI so a real really nice uh, way of looking at uh, KPIs or, or interacting with them to actually get to see exactly what's going on and obviously the three metrics that we're tracking here have all got their own summaries associated with them so it's a nice little dashboard uh, from a KPI point of view so I mentioned a moment ago that we actually can interact with uh, mapping and layers and backgrounds etc um, and we've got a dashboard to, to give you a quick example of that and it's a very very simple way of doing this so if we look at this bottom map we've got a scatter plot that we've used but we've plotted it onto background map and it's using GIS coordinates longitude and latitude to do this so long as you have longitude and latitude and the data you want to plot you can plot straight onto the map so we can zoom in on this as well if necessary you can go down to street level if you really wanted to or indeed you can change what you're actually looking at uh, on the map by changing the filter set and changing the data value straight away so that doesn't have to be uh, the inbuilt Yellowfin map could be Google Maps uh, we happen to be using Google Maps here and we're all quite used to Google Maps and how to interact and use Google Maps um, and that's exactly the same in Yellowfin just GIS coordinates again longitude and latitude um, and you know you can do some really really funky stuff and even go down to street level within Yellowfin as well uh, for the Google map if you really wanted to heat grids 
plotted onto background layers. We saw a Twitter feed a moment ago. We've got a heat grid being plotted onto a map again. We can zoom in on that. Or indeed the actual overlay and the actual layers um, we can use uh, to get information by pointing at them um, and getting information out of those or indeed deciding what we want to plot over the top straight away of whatever layering we've decided to use. So there's loads of different ways of interacting or looking and, and getting at the data from a consumer point of view. But from a creator point of view, it needs to be a nice, uh, easy environment to work in as well. Uh, and that's what we've done within Yellowfin. We've created a really nice, uh, simple drag and drop interface um, for creating reports and charts. So I've just jumped into uh, that drag and drop interface at the moment. And there's a few things I, I need to uh, tell you about this and move you around this screen. So the first thing uh, we can note straight away is that we've got the ability to use more than one data source uh, within Yellowfin. You're not limited there. Um, so your administrator would create uh, a number of data sources for you, data sources being databases, uh, and they could be all over the place. Uh, there just needs to be a route to them. Uh, and Yellowfin can use multiple data sources and multiple views to create a report. And I'll show you how that comes together in a moment. But uh, for the time being, if we were just using this report, I would just use these uh, fields and folders that have been allocated to me via review. But if I did want to use an additional data source, I would choose my additional data source. I've got a number of them built in at the moment, and I could pick another one if I wanted to. Uh, to create my report. If I wanted to pick a particular view associated with that data source, I'll explain views in a minute, I could do that as well. So um, there's a number of ways of doing this on whatever kind of uh, query or join that I want to use to, uh, to get that data across. Um, if I wanted to actually edit the view associated with this, um, I can do that within the actual report or I can do that with a, within administration as well. And we'll take a look at those in a moment. But suffice to say, I'll quickly tour of this page. We have on the left hand side, we have our various uh, folders and fields that we're allowed to use for this report um, built up from our uh, data source view. We have the ability to add our own calculated fields if we really wanted to. We'll do one of those in a second. We've got various uh, options for this particular report and we have a big canvas on the right hand side. Now to create a report in Yellowfin, it's a really simple process of just dragging the information that we want from the left and dropping it on the right. And we immediately see a report coming together. And I'll take a few of these fields and do that. <clears throat> and there we go, we've already got a report. It's quite a basic report, but we've already got one. Now I can start playing with this if I wanted to. If I want to create this as a, a bit of a cross tab, I could do that quite easily. If I wanted to reorder any of these columns, I can do that. I'll just move them around wherever I want them. If I want to do any particular aggregations or sum or formatting issues, etc., on these columns, all all are available within uh, a drop-down menu for each of the columns, including such things as advanced functioning. Uh, percentages and, and so on and so forth, um, top tens and so on. Uh, so there's loads of different things I can do within Yellowfin within this data here. I can even tidy it up so it's a bit more presentable. So for example, I just turn on a uh, suppressed duplicate. So I've now boxed all of Asia. So this is all of my Asia thing. If I wanted totals for this, I could add that to the bottom and so on and so forth. So there's a number of things I can do. I also have my various drill options in the middle here. I've got drill down set already, so I can drill down uh, on the various links that have already been defined in my hierarchy. If I wanted drill anywhere, I would just select drill anywhere. Now I can go anywhere. If I wanted drill through, I would select drill through and point Yellowfin at the uh, reports that I want to drill through to. So I've got all my various drill options in the middle, uh, including no drill if I don't want to go anywhere or co-display, which is another report I want to associate with this one. So that's a really simple uh, interface. There's no programming needed here, uh, no development needed whatsoever. I've, I've just got a real simple drag and drop. The only time I might actually want to do a little bit of coding, well, it's not really coding, more sort of mathematics, is if I wanted to create calculated fields. So for example, if I want to create the difference between the estimate and the, and the uh, actual total invoiced amount, um, I could do that very simply with a calculated field. 
and I would do that by picking what it is I want to use. So I'll just do uh, invoice amount, uh, less the estimate in this instance. <clears throat> really simple to do, just like so. Uh, save that and I've now got my, my difference field and I can drop that on there and see the difference between the two straight away. So there's a number of things I can do within this environment to create my report. Uh, I might actually want to leave my report. I don't just want a report. I might want a chart as well. Uh, and that's very simple. I would got my data that I'm ready for my report. I would just select charts, uh, jump into charts and a very similar environment. I've got what I can use for my chart. I've got my uh, various axis, etc., in the middle and a canvas. And I would just drop uh, what I want for my report, uh, my chart straight onto uh, my various axis and I get a chart straight away. If I want another one, I just press the plus and I create another one and I can build up all my various charts uh, and reports um, using Yellowfin to actually make the output that I'm after. Now Yellowfin's used an auto chart here, it's just thrown together a couple of bar charts looking at uh, the data I've provided. If I'm not happy with that and I want a completely different chart type, I just select a different chart type from one of the 50 plus that we've got available uh, within Yellowfin um, and I would get a completely different chart type. Um, so for example, I'll delete that one. I could go to this one and say, actually, I want a different chart type um, and I'll pick that for example and so on. So I can easily adjust this and I can add background layers, labeling, change the axis, font, format, etc. of this particular chart. I've already got my data, I've already got my chart. If I want to add filters to all this sort of stuff, it's really simple to do. Um, within my actual data screen, I just pick what it is that I want to do uh, filter on and I drop them into my filters. So it really is as simple as that and I already have my filter available to me straight away. So it's a very simple interface, quite intuitive and a really, really nice uh, environment to work in. My actual final output screen, um, which is what the end user would see when they open up this report and take a look at it, consists of my filters that I've defined. I've got my canvas that I'm going to put my charts on and I've got my data. So building this is super easy as well. I just take my charts and I just place them on my, on my canvas um, and then resize them, etc. I'm not limited to that. If I wanted to add uh, imagery um, or I wanted to add text, make some boxes, etc., to sectional of this kind of stuff or add various icons, I can easily do that. Now, that's exactly how we created that Twitter stats page. We took an image and we dropped it onto the canvas. It was the Twitter stats image and we overlaid the various reports on top of that. So a really simple way of doing it. In this instance, though, I'll just take these two charts that I've created and just resize them so they're actually visible to me on the page and I'll be okay with that and I've created my output that the end users are going to see. I'm going to do a quick tidy up. I'm going to make this uh, filter set uh, a bit more interesting so I'll just put it on the left side nav and I'll turn uh, average age into a slider for example rather than having people actually enter information. And straight away, I've got a, a much nicer interface for people to work in. Uh, and I can see that these work by setting these things. Uh, and we'll just see what the results are. And we can see my charts change straight away. So instantly, I've got uh, exactly what I want by way of uh, filtering and data being displayed. So I'll quickly save that and I'll show you what we can do with that because we can share this information and distribute it um, and so on and so forth quite easily. <clears throat> so within Yellowfin, once you've created your charts and your data and your, your reports, etc., there's a number of things you can do with this. Um, you can share this information. So a number of ways of sharing this information with other users of Yellowfin or external if your security allows you to do that. And the first one is to export this information um, which will provide a, a static report of, of what you've got going there. So CSV, doc, PDF, RTF, text, XLS, etc. And this would export uh, from Yellowfin this particular report. It becomes static. There's no drill um, or brushing or anything like that, obviously, because it's now external in the same way 
you wouldn't be able to drill or, or brush uh, a PDF document. That's what we're looking at from the export point of view. Another way of sharing this information is to use Yellowfin share function. And this provides you a number of ways of uh, getting the information out to people. So the first one is distribution. And this is where you would effectively build a recipient list of who you want to distribute this report to. Whatever message you want to include with it. And when you OK that, it would email uh, this report to uh, the users on that distribution list. Now, the thing to note here is that um, you've got security involved here. So um, if the security of this report allows the report to be uh, interacted with, um, they would receive a URL that allows them to log in only if they've got a username and password, and they'll be able to interact the report in the same way as if they're actually using it within Yellowfin. Or um, if, there's, if that uh, provision isn't allowed for in this particular report, they'll get just get the static report in that email. And you can uh, define exactly how that email looks, Yellowfin's white label. So if you wanted to brand all of this up to your own logos and stuff, you can do that without any trouble whatsoever. Another way to share this report uh, is to embed the report. Now embedding works very simply in that Yellowfin does the work again for you and provides you with some JavaScript. And the JavaScript is a, a link basically to the report within Yellowfin. Um, so it's the entire report. Uh, and basically what that means is if you want to embed this report or this chart uh, in a wiki or an intranet site or internet page or something like that, um, you can do that very easily by cutting and pasting this particular script which is just for this report uh, and pasting it wherever you want to do that and i can show you that very briefly if i just open up this particular uh, demo site here we've done exactly that with regard to the time slider report we were looking earlier uh, and that's just that cut and paste for that particular report uh, pasted directly into this page and i've got all the interactions that i had with my time slider earlier on uh, when we were looking at from a consumer point of view. And that's not limited to just charts or reports. That could be entire dashboards as well. So in the same sense, we've embedded the entire KPI dashboard uh, into this page as well. So you're not limited in, in how you do that. That's just a very quick way of integrating the, uh, the report and chart. There is another way of doing that, and that's with a, a full API. And the API is all encompassing. So every particular option within Yellowfin is available through uh, programmatic means with the API. So you can do that as well. Uh, another way of distributing this uh, data out or this report out to people is using the broadcast function. Now the broadcast function is basically us asking Yellowfin to do some work for us. And what we can do here um, is we can say to Yellowfin, I want you to uh, send this report out to my recipients, which I will list um, with this particular subject title and this particular text that goes with it. With a particular filter set, if you have a particular filter set you want to use, and I want you to always send it weekly on a Saturday, um, for example, and we'll do it Australia time zone, Sydney 5.30. Yellowfin is going to be running in the background. It's a service on your server, wherever that is. Um, and it's looking at this. And every Saturday at 5.30 p.m. Sydney time, it will distribute this report to all of those users, um, to all of your recipients. Now, that's great, but you might not want it then. So you've got the option to choose between minutes, end of month, etc. All the various options biannually, annually, and so on and so forth are available. Or you may even say, I only want to actually distribute this report um, if a particular rule is met. And you can build up these rules. So for example, I might actually say, I want to only send this out if my sum invoiced amount is equal to $5 million. And I would like you to check every 45 minutes, for example. So Yellowfin is now going to check this report. It's going to take a look at the data every 45 minutes. If the sum invoiced amount is equal to 5 million, it's going to send this report out to all of the people on my recipients list. Now that's great, but also bear in mind that what you can do is you can you can do the same thing within the data. So you can set up all these alerts as well. So the actual report itself can highlight uh, various alerts, whether it be on text or a bar or so on and so forth, uh, and link that with a broadcast. It can start to become a, a bit of a, 
uh, an, an alert and or trigger point uh, to have some other kind of action take place. So that's a really great way of distributing and getting the data out to various people. Now, there are some other things I can do with this report. Obviously, I can make it part of my favorites. I can bookmark it, which records a particular filter set for myself that I'm quite happy with. I can add some annotations to this page, etc. And there's a bit of information about this particular report. I also have the ability to start collaborating with my uh, fellow colleagues uh, with this report and with Yellowfin. Now, uh, there's a number of ways of doing that. The first one is a very simple way of collaborating, and that's commentary. So Yellowfin provides uh, commentary for all of uh, your users um, to make comments associated with a report. So for example, um, I'll just add um, comment one to this particular report. And what happens is that comment now lives with this report. And you can see that was me that made that. Um, uh, you can see when I did it. Uh, and if you wanted to, and you're a user of this report, you could make some kind of reply, um, resolve it if it's an issue, delete it if it needs to go, and so on and so forth. You can build up a commentary. And it ends up with a commentary going down the page, etc., from all the various users of this report. And the good thing there is that the commentary stays with the report. So if you happen to embed that report in some other page or something, um, the comments are there as well to be looked at and viewed. Obviously, you can see all comments. Or if you like, you could just subscribe to the comments, and then you would just receive an email to say somebody's made a comment on this report and what the comment is. So that's a nice way to start um, collaborating with your team and interacting with the team. However, it's not the only way within Yellowfin. We've got a much better way uh, of collaborating uh, and really working together. And that's using the discussion forum tool that's built into Yellowfin. Now, what this really, um, it's a fantastic way of, of, of using this. What this really does is it allows you and your team to work together to create reports, charts, dashboards, etc., that are really required by the business you're looking at. Um, what I mean by that is very simply, um, I'll give you an example. If I was to ask, um, please review the attached report, um, I could add to that a report um, and distribute that uh, to a number of people. I could make it private and just specify specific people I want to see this, um, or I can let this go out to a discussion forum that uh, a number of users could be associated with. I could add a dashboard to this as well, various links, pictures, images, and so on and so forth. Or I could put this out and just say, look, it's an issue, and I need it resolved by a particular date, um, and OK that, and then post it. Now, everybody within this discussion forum uh, can see that this has been posted out. There's an issue with it. Um, what's going on with the actual report? They can link direct to the report by selecting it. Or they could indeed add various replies, uh, insights, likes, dislikes, etc., and work together to create the report, dashboard, chart that is really needed um, by the company, by the team, um, whoever. So it's a really great way of collaborating and working together. Now, it happens that we've expanded upon this um, within the newer version. Uh, of Yellowfin, which is due out very, very soon, uh, 7.2, to include the ability to associate tasks um, with your, your fellow users as well. So if you wanted to, you could create a task that's being required and allocate it to somebody, and they would see it pop up on their own timeline, um, which you've got access to from your user account. Uh, and they would see all the various tasks that they've, they've been allocated and need to work on. They can respond to those, work on those tasks, declare them complete, and so on. And you can review them as well if you allocated them, and so on and so forth. It starts to become a tool that everybody can work with uh, and use for the progression of the products or the business case, whatever you're working on. It's a fantastic way of getting through that. Um, now, this has to be created by somebody and started up, uh, and as with all of these things. Um, and typically, that would be uh, your system administrator that would uh, create these various data sources, um, views, and so on and so forth. So we'll take a quick look at that. Um, and I'll explain a little bit more about uh, data sources and views uh, from this point from the administration uh, console. So obviously, I'm a systems administrator on my machine here. So I've got access to this 
to this console, the admin console. Now, that's a really good point. I might not actually want my users to have access to this, so I would define my users as something other than system administrator. So within Yellowfin, we have role-based security. So the role-based security is really a case of uh, defining what a user is allowed or isn't allowed to do within Yellowfin. So once you've created your user accounts, you would create the roles that they've got uh, that are available and within the role you define exactly what function um, within Yellowfin that role is allowed to do. So a quick look at the admin role for example and you can see that pretty much every function of Yellowfin is allowed which makes perfect sense but for example if I didn't want um, people to have access or I didn't want admins to have access to create uh, storyboards I would untick these and I'll explain what a storyboard is in a minute um, but I would untick these and no longer would admin have access to storyboard and so on so that's how easy it is to define security for user accounts within Yellowfin now on top of that we can also define uh, security associated with data sources and with views now this is where the data governance within Yellowfin comes in and it's very, very strong. So not only uh, governance from a user access point of view, but governance from a, for a governance from a, a data point of view. So for example, within Yellowfin, we have the ability to connect to multiple data sources at the same time. Now what that means is that we can actually um, have uh, databases, data sources all over the world, as so long as they're accessible from a root point of view, we're able to connect to them um, and use the data stored within them. So if we look at my scene screen here, I've got lots of different data sources and loads of different places. And if I wanted another one as administrator, I'm able to simply click add and add uh, a data source, which I will show you. Um, not a good way of spelling it. <coughs> So I've got a new data source, new source here, and I would just pick what database it is that I actually want to connect to. And as you can see, there are lots of them. This isn't all of them. There are loads more that we can add in here as well. It's literally using um, uh, just a connector, a data connector, a JDBC or ODBC connector um, that we just plug into Yellowfin and we have access to that particular data source. Now, on top of that, um, we also have access to uh, cubes. So if you want to connect to an XMLA cube or something like that, that's available as well uh, within Yellowfin quite easily. Um, and basically, it's the same principle. So you pick what you want to connect to, the database that you want to connect to. So, for example, if I want to connect to a MySQL database and fill in the blanks. So once you've filled in the various blanks, <coughs> given a, a username, password, etc., relevant for that particular database. Or if, uh, if there's no security associated with it, whatever you need, you fill in the various blanks and get a little green tick saying that the connector's ready, database schema associated with it, and so on and so forth. Now, if you wanted to apply security to this, so only specific uh, people or groups, uh, client groups or client views are allowed access to this particular data source, you can do that as well. Or you can have a quick look at the summary uh, and be quite happy. And you would, you would have your new data source uh, available uh, to use to create a view, a schema. It's as simple as that from a data source point of view. Yellowfin uses views to, to work with this. So I'll explain what a view is by taking a look at our current view that we've been using for this particular uh, demonstration, which has been Ski Team Data. Now, what a view is for anybody who's used to seeing databases, uh, they'll recognize this. But what a view is, is effectively taking the various tables and fields from the database and saying whether somebody's allowed to use them, how they would use them, and so on and so forth. So we're already able to have multiple data sources, and we can use those multiple data sources uh, in one or many reports. It's up to us how we use them. You can also have multiple views within multiple data sources. So for example, here I've got this one particular view for this data source, but if I wanted to have another one, my previous screen, I would just create a new view, uh, pick the data source and just build my view. 
So my view I have here uh, a number of tables, a number of fields within the table, and the various joins that link these tables together to create myself um, an SQL statement, which is how the data is uh, retrieved from the various data sources to give me a, a quick snapshot of the data so I know I'm getting exactly what I expect to get. And then also give me the various tables and folders that my end user is going to see when they come to uh, the actual uh, building or creating their report. So I can see here I have all my various folders and my various fields. Um, so my end user, when they come to create the report, will see exactly this. And that's what my view is about, is to create this particular um, list here. I'm also able to create various calculated fields um, in the same way I could do it in report. I could do it at the view level, uh, allowing those to be available for everybody who creates reports with that particular view. I can even, if I wanted to, build a view now that has multiple data sources um, at, at the beginning as well called a composite view and I can link all those together. So I'm really not limited in how I use my data that's available or how I go about providing that to my end users to create my reports. I can also apply security to a particular view um, so I can define whether anybody is allowed or who are allowed to access these particular views for creating the various reports. <clears throat> uh, or I can take a quick summary and activate it. I'll activate it at this time um, so that I'm able to actually use and create these views and create these reports. So my security uh, isn't just associated to user accounts. It also applies to data sources and to views um, and obviously the roles and so on and so forth. You can also, within this uh, admin console, create client organizations, which is a, an interesting one because that allows me to take my Yellowfin instance and divide it up so I can block it down to the point of, uh, for example, I could have three or four different customers that are logging into Yellowfin, uh, to my Yellowfin instance, but I don't want them to see anybody else's. I only want them to see their own. I would create a client organization and associate the various data sources and views to that client organization. So when they log in, they only see their own stuff. So I've got governance all over Yellowfin here on how I control and how I actually um, get at or create reports and so on and so forth. In addition to all of this, I have something called Storyboard. And Storyboard is a, a really fantastic way uh, of presenting this information if you were to actually need to do some form of presentation. So think of uh, Storyboard as something like PowerPoint on steroids. Um, it kind of provides you with all the same functionality of uh, a slideshow with menus, etc., that you can jump around and, and slide about within the system. But because it's Yellowfin, and because we've got the power of Yellowfin behind it, we can use the same functionality in Storyboard that we can use uh, in Yellowfin. So for example, I've got all my drill options within my presentation here. So if I happen to be looking at a particular slide uh, and I'm making a presentation to somebody and somebody decides they, they want to play stump the presenter and ask where these particular figures come from, with Yellowfin it's not a problem because I can drill down into them and actually show exactly where these figures come from or change my metrics and so on within my presentation tool. It becomes a very powerful tool. It starts to become a three-dimensional presentation tool um, as opposed to a, just a 2D slideshow. So it's a very, very powerful way and all of the various interactions work um, in, in this uh, storyboard as they do within Yellowfin, including brushing, filters, and so on and so forth. Now, another thing to add to all of this you're not just limited to accessing this via a web browser. We also have native apps for iOS and Android devices. And they basically are linked to exactly the same Yellowfin instance that your uh, customers or yourself look at your reports. So if you log in on your Android or uh, iOS device, you would see exactly the same dashboards, reports, charts, etc. on your mobile device as you would see if you were to log in via your web browser. There's no need to export and import this stuff. It's right there available to you immediately. And of course, 
as with everything else in Yellowfin, with all the reports, charts, etc., uh, Storyboard also allows you to do the various distributions, emails, and sharing, and so on and so forth. So your presentations can become mobile, as well as your reports and charts, and so on and so forth. Um, now, I did want to very quickly show you um, just a, a quick sort of intro to 7.2, uh, because that's the latest version that's coming out. So although it may look very similar uh, to 7.1, there's a couple of key features. So I mentioned um, very earlier on that um, we've got this task, uh, this task functionality uh, and stream, etc. within 7.2. Um, we've got that uh, for sure. So we can definitely see um, and set various tasks or streams or discussions and so on and so forth um, for uh, our people and so on and so forth through your colleagues etc within the system that's not a problem at all we can even link to specific people that we've decided uh, to actually start up and and create uh, various discussions going on so it's a nice easy layout for getting around this kind of stuff uh, within yellowfin now something else that uh, we've added within 7.2 that isn't available in 7.1 at the moment, um, is the ability to add forecasting and trending um, uh, of reports, etc. So for example, uh, if I very quickly edit this particular, um, this particular report, this particular chart, typically we've tried to sort of shy away from doing this uh, trending and forecasting simply because we we like to present the truth within yellowfin rather than speculation on what's happening but we spent a long time getting the the algorithms and the mathematics correct for this kind of stuff um, so we're very confident now that we've got a, a a very nice way of doing it so this is a very very basic chart and if i wanted to create a forecast for this particular chart i would just drag the forecast option in uh, and click what I want to actually forecast on and straight away I get a forecast. Now because this is quite a basic chart, um, it's given me a basic forecast. If I had a lot more information, obviously this would look somewhat different. Um, I can do the same with a trend if I wanted to. I just drag that in and pick a particular trend and I can see my trend. Now the great thing here is that uh, the actual mathematics and description of this trend um, we're transparent, so we'll show you exactly what we've done to get this information, uh, and you can look at that and be be happy that uh, and confident that what you're seeing is a pretty good reflection of what's happening. So that's taken quite a bit of work in 7.2 to get that get that working and get it to the point where we're very confident and happy with it, um, and that's one of the extra key features. Additional things in 7.2 that we've built in is connectors with pre-built content um, to specific uh, connectors. So for example, YouTube analytics, I can pull that information out straight away of various sub menus associated with it. Um, I can pull out Google analytic information directly from websites that I'm, I'm gathering analytic data for. Uh, I can do the same with LinkedIn. And there's loads more coming like Facebook, Twitter, um, various Marketo for marketing connectors, MailChimp and so on and so forth. There's loads of different connectors coming um, that will give us instant information from a number of these social media things. But also um, there's all the normal connectors within Yellowfin that we've already seen. So again, I can add all the various uh, connections to all the various different data sources and so on and so forth if I wanted to with a slightly nicer and neater interface to be able to do it uh, and to be able to use it and so on and so forth. So we've really tried to expand on what we've got with 7.1 to 7.2 and give it a much nicer feel along with a whole bunch of new functionality, which I, I could spend the next hour going through. But uh, time, time is a bit of a constraint on that one. So really from a sort of overriding features and functions of Yellowfin, uh, I've pretty much covered all bases uh, at this point. Um, I'm sure you guys have got lots of questions. And as, as Mark said at the beginning, um, any real specific questions, just fire them back uh, and I can cover those via email or another topic at any point. But if there's any real burning issues that you, you want to come up with, then, then please, uh, I'll happily answer questions. Carol, it's Mark here. <coughs> thanks, for, Hi. thanks very much Hi, for Mark. the presentation. Thanks for really, really good. <coughs> um, a couple of questions that are coming back from everyone is like just the context of CMC and what they have, right? 
Um, the question some of the guys are asking is, are all the features of, that you see in the current version, not the new version, available in, the, in what, what you have at BMC? Uh, no, unfortunately they're not. Um, there are certain things that are, are, are limitation in BMC. Um, the main one really is the data sources. Within BMC, you're yeah. limited to BMC data sources, and that, that's a real turn off for a lot of people. Um, in Yellowfin, no, not at all. You're not limited to data sources. There's there's hundreds of them, um, and and you can create your reports and charts from one or many of those data sources. Um, however many charts reports you want to build. So that's kind of one major um, limitation that we, we, you know, that Yellowfin has um, sort of knocked BMC apart with. Um, other things, yeah, the charts reports are still available in BMC, but quite a few of them are, are pre-built and you're not really given the flexibility to, to go mad and create lots more. So you can do that as well uh, within Yellowfin. And then of course, all the various integrations um, and export options, uh, and I'm sure there's more. I mean, they're, they're quite a com comprehensive list, which I'll I'll, uh, I'll happily send round to people if they like. Yeah, that'd be that'd be very good actually, Karen, if we could see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, I suppose any anyone got any other questions so far? No, I don't know. It's quiet at my end, Mark. Yeah, me, me too. Uh, just, just uh, Mark, it's, it's, it's Fred. Hi. Hi. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm just wondering about the licensing. Then is this um like bundled in with BMC? Well, it's Remedy Smart Reporting is bundled in with Remedy Nine, Fred. Yeah. Yeah. But if you want to do multiple data sources, you would have to have a yellow bin license. license. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Sure. Okay, sure. Any other questions, comments? Yeah, just in terms of the upgrades to uh, smart reporting with BMC. So, um, is that all completely up to BMC, or or does kind of Yellowfin do upgrades of that product at all on its own? Yeah, do you want me to or should we just on Mark? Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. Go for it. Karen. Yeah, I mean the the the. the the two products are very different products from a, a licensing and a marketing point of view. Uh, I, there are obviously similarities in the product because um, Remedy 9 is Yellowfin, but it's embedded within that system. So if you wanted to have all the functionality of Yellowfin, it, it's, a, it's a different product. Um, you wouldn't be able to just pay a small license upgrade fee and upgrade Remedy 9 to Yellowfin. That's not how we would be able to do that. It's a separate okay. system, yeah. for instance. Makes sense. So, so it's basically up to BMC. Uh, if they come up with the next version, they might actually implement some more functionality from Yellowfin, and that, but it's completely up to them. Yeah, yeah I mean, they, they might. We're, we're not aware that that is a plan. Um, yeah. W yeah. I can't help you there what their plans are in their mind. Okay. So, Cole, just one more question. Um, in terms of, of requested features from other customers of yours, are they more on the the social side, or are they uh, are they like technical features that are being requested as well? No, that's a good question. Actually, from a uh, uh, customer feedback, we we love it because it, it helps us create the the next product really in the development side of things. Um, so it's really cool. The the what we've had over the last sort of year or so has been. Um, more aimed at, yeah, the social media side of things, hence the, the sexy new connectors within 7.2. Yeah, there's been a few feature enhancements within the product as well. They're, they've been asking for sort of nicer look and feel in certain areas. Um, but it really has been more associated with, uh, yeah, sort of social media connections. Because we have so many connectors available anyway, um, and anybody who comes along and says, oh, we need to connect to a database that we don't have in that list. It's a small step and a small bit of work for us to put another connector together for whatever obscure database it is that we need to connect to. But, yeah, it's certainly been driven towards social media rather than um, uh, the sort of normal database connections. 
we've also found a lot of people moving away from big data back to more relational databases as well. So we've done quite a bit of work in that area to make that a more friendly trip as well. Okay, thank you, Carl. Yeah, it was a great presentation. Yeah, you're welcome. No problem at all. Hey, Carl, it's Ryder. One, one more question. So uh, I might have missed this. What are the options to uh, import the user repository or, or to actually integrate with SSO? Okay, yeah. So, um, yeah, uh, yeah, we work hand-in-hand -hand with single sign-on stuff. So if you happen to be using uh, LDAP or Active Directory or something like that, um, the configuration uh, is within Yellowfin. So you tell Yellowfin uh, the sort of key user and the access route to your Active Directory server or your directory service. Um, and then what happens is Yellowfin actually mirrors what you've got in that environment. So if you have a, a user account that you disable uh, in your Active Directory, for example, Yellowfin knows about it straight away. So if the user tries to log in uh, to get, <coughs> excuse me, tries to log into Yellowfin, uh, they're not going to get in. So uh, the Active Directory has said, yeah, they're not allowed access. So because we work hand in hand with it, anything that's happened within the directory service, Yellowfin knows about straight away. It doesn't try to do anything on its own. Okay. okay. But Yellowfin would actually pull the user list still and store it in Yellowfin as well, yeah? Yeah, it pulls it through so that when you come to create your distribution list, for example, if you want to share uh, a report, rather than it have to interrogate um, the directory service for that list, um, it, it's just there available to it straight away. It's also handy if the directory service goes offline um, and you want people to be actually be able to log in, they would still be able to use their username and password to see the uh, reports, charts, etc. So, okay, okay. Yeah, it's a cool way of doing it and there's pros and cons. Um, but I, I quite like it that way, to be honest. I quite like that that sort of flexibility. And what if uh, what if LDAP integration would not be an option? Uh, what do you normally do? You just import it from spreadsheet or something? Yeah, you can do absolutely. Um, all user accounts, passwords, etc., exist within Yellowfin anyway. So if you wanted to just drag in from a CSV file for user accounts, you could do that quite easily. Uh, all of that. Function. So could you could you actually uh, configure an integration to a flat file as well? Yeah. So it's regularly yeah. updated. Okay. Yeah, you do that. Yeah. So that can that can be automated. That's not just a one-off. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. 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 You could do that. I've just seen a, another question flash up actually. The difference between drill through and drill anywhere. Um, it's actually not not a daft question. It's a good question. Drill drill through will take you from. Uh, whatever metric or dimension you've chosen to drill through, it'll drill through to another report and present that whole report. And that report could be um, made up of lots of data and different charts, graphics, etc. Um, so a drill through would take you through to that. Whereas Drill Anywhere allows you to change the metrics that are being displayed on a particular chart to what you drill anywhere to. So you're confined to the uh, chart that you're using with Drill Anywhere, but with Drill Through, you're not confined to anything. You can go through to an entire report. Um, Carol, one question for me, Carol. You know, when you were showing us there on the charts, when you were kind of doing it, you were hovering over the chart and selecting a subset of the chart. Yeah. Um, do you have to have specific permissions for that, or, do you, or can any report viewer do that? Uh, any report viewer can do that by default. They can just point at a chart and see more data with it. But you do have control over um, the sort of distribution of data. So to a degree, um, not fully, but to a degree, you can say um, particular consumers can just see the report, but we don't want them to actually be able to interact with the chart, for example. Uh, but other users can see the chart interact with it and also see any sort of uh, pop-up data associated with uh, bands or bars or whatever that are in that chart. Okay. And the other question I have then is just, just you mentioned about the um, mobile clients that you have, but does it also work like on, you know, say looking if you're using like say Safari on, on iOS, does it work the same as it does on the desktop? Um, it's consumer only on mobile devices, um, which, which makes sense to be honest, because you don't want people creating reports and charts 
from a mobile yeah. device that that just wouldn't work um so it's consumer only uh, but it, it it looks and and it's an app obviously so it, it kind of relies upon what you can do with your fingers as opposed to a mouse so the interactions are a little different but all the interactions are there brushing's there drill through down anywhere um the summaries all this sort of stuff it all it all appears as you would expect and the interactions are as you would think they would be on a mobile device cool okay so um anyway have you got any more questions you know, i know we've got over slightly and um you're all very busy so if there's any other questions you've got guys you can maybe drop them in an email to me and then i'll i'll work with them with Carol. okay yeah really happy to do that Thanks very much, everybody, for your time. Really appreciate it. Um, as, as Mark said, any questions yet, email, not a problem at all. I'll come back to you. Yeah, and thanks, Carol. That was really, really good. Like, yeah, I think so, some of us were blown away by some of the features we saw, so it was great. Yeah. Very welcome indeed. No problem at all. Thanks. No problem, Mark. Good, good to hear from you. Thanks, guys. Speak to you later. Have a good yeah, weekend. Thank you, Carl. Yeah. Bye, guys. Thanks Bye. Very much. Bye. Bye. Bye.